Hey everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Today I'm talking about a combination of books and nutrition and how you can take books and you can use different kinds of food. I've talked about this before. I've actually written two blogs that were both very, very popular and shared quite a lot about these topics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you about three different stories that you can uh, use the stories and incorporate fun foods. The first one is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. And most of you, I'm sure you've read these books and you've read these to your children or they've read them at school but they are enchanting the whole Narnia Chronicles. But The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, you know, remember about Lucy that she finds um, this wardrobe, she goes through it and she's taken into the enchanted land of Narnia. And there she meets a fawn and eventually she and her siblings meet Aslan, the, the great lion. But she has a brother, Edmund, and Edmund goes into it and Edmund actually meets a person called the White Witch. Now it's interesting, this is kind of a interesting play on words because because in turn, we think in terms of white if somebody is sweet and good and pure and everything, and she's anything but. She's more like a black witch. But she is surprised to see Edmund, and Edmund's surprised to see her. And so she takes Edmund into her uh, carriage. Now, this is a really big picture. I don't know if you can see the whole thing on this one, but this shows you how incredibly huge that is and what the white witch looks like. So she goes in and she wants Edmund to open up, so she gives him bad magic food. She gives him Turkish delight. And as he eats it, he spills his guts, basically. He's telling the witch everything about his sister Lucy coming in and talking to a fawn and so on and so forth. So the white witch convinces him that he needs to bring back all of his siblings and come back to her palace, and she will have more Turkish delight there. Okay, so what I did is some books you can pre-read before you read to your children. So what I did is I, had, I already knew this story. So I went out to, you can go to Seize Candy and I bought a pound of chocolate. And I bought those chocolate ones, the dark chocolate with the raspberry filling. They're very sickeningly sweet. So what I did is I read this part of the book about Edmund and seeing the White Witch and eating the Turkish Delight. And then I passed around the candy and I said, guess what boys, we're going to eat this entire pound in one sitting because there were some things that I wanted to teach them about in, in this. And so we read the book, we ate the entire pound of chocolate, we all basically got sick. But there was a couple of things that we brought up. One of them was this, you can't get full on things you don't need. Okay, think about that. You can't get full on things you don't need and we don't, and we didn't need a whole entire pound of chocolate to eat in one sitting and neither did Edmund need this bad magic food. The other point that we brought up is all else obtained, the emptiness remains. Here Edmund had eaten this whole entire box of Turkish delight and how did he feel at the end? Did he feel full or did he feel happy? No, he felt empty. He wanted more. He wanted to fill up just the act of eating that bad magic food seemed to make him feel a little bit better. So that's one way that you can use the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Another thing is because you're talking about sugar, you know, those <laughs> sugar, talk to them about some of the bad things about sugar. It's eight times more addicting than cocaine. Can you believe that? It also can cause headaches and depression. It also can cause people with eczema for their eczema to be even worse. So talk about some of the bad things about sugar. And there is, as Shakespeare said, moderation in all things. Sugar is one of those things that people do have a hard time moderating because, of course, it tastes so great. All right, so that's one book. Another one is Green Eggs and Ham by Dr. Seuss. This is a classic one. This is in sing-song fashion. You already know the story. That Sam I Am is trying to get that guy to try green eggs and ham, and he doesn't want to try it. And of course, eventually he does try it, and he likes it. So what we did around um, March 17th, around St. Patrick's Day, is I dyed the milk, I dyed the pancakes, and I dyed the eggs green. Now, sounds like it's okay, right? Have you ever tried eating green eggs? Have you ever tried drinking green milk or eating green pancakes? It's not as easy as you think. For some reason, that green color just makes everything look awful. But we did it once a year, just kind of as a fun tradition and something, and we talked about how we get so used to things being a certain color, particularly with food, that when they change dramatically from maybe white, brown, or yellow to everything bright green, 
how difficult it is to eat it. There's something psychological that we expect it to taste green or something, and it doesn't affect the taste. So we talk about eating things that are hard sometimes to try and to eat. They said that children have to be uh, introduced to something between 8 and 11 times before they'll actually really, really try it and maybe like it. Okay, so what we did is we would, I would make different things or we'd go out to a different restaurant and we would order something on the menu that sounded really different and everyone would take at least one bite to at least try it to kind of enlarge their palate. Okay, the last book I'm going to talk about is a, a Tommy DePaulo is James O'Rourke and the Big Potato. This is, I love anything by Tommy DePaulo and this is a really fun book. It's about Jamie, I should say Jamie O'Rourke. And his wife, Eileen, is the one who keeps everything in the house going. She works really hard, brings in the bacon, so to speak. And Jamie's kind of lazy. Well, his wife, she gets hurt. Her back gets hurt. And so Jamie is going to have to work. He's going to have to keep things going. And he's really worried about starving. So he's walking to the village, and he meets a leprechaun. And the leprechaun gives him these magic seeds, and if he grows them, he's going to have the biggest potato ever, and he'll never grow hungry. Now, Jamie likes this idea because then he's not going to have to work either, but there's pros and cons to it. There's advantages and disadvantages to this great, huge potato. So what you can do as a fun activity is have a potato bar. But potatoes have, they actually have a lot of glucose, a lot of sugar in, so they can raise blood sugar. So instead of having a potato bar, do a sweet potato bar. Now, sweet potatoes and white potatoes are no relation to each other. They're not cousins, they're not sisters, they're not anything. They are totally in different families. But sweet potatoes actually are a lot healthy for us. There's a lot more vitamins and minerals. There's a lot more phytochemicals in them. And actually, uh, sweet potatoes can help our pancreas. They're in the shape of the pancreas, and they actually help and strengthen the pancreas. So do a sweet potato bar and talk about all the benefits of eating sweet potatoes as opposed to a white potato. So these are just some ideas. I have a lot more in my blog. Um, I talk about a lot of different other books. They're in two different blogs, and you can access them on Good Parenting Brighter Children. I also have videos that go along with them. these uh, that you can also watch. And let me leave with you, leave you with one quote, and it's by Tommy DePaulo. He said, reading is, reading is important because if you can read, you can learn anything about everything and everything about anything. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you tomorrow.